Many moons ago, I spent every single day thinking about what I did not have, and it wasn't from a place of manifesting where you believe it is yours. It was from a place of lack. So yearning really became a big part of me, and it was almost like a, what I would say today, like I call it sad sack behavior. <laughs> like literally, it was a lot of self-pity. I would sort of take responsibility for myself, but in a sense of like, oh, they'll see, or oh, like nothing good happens to me. Oh, let me sacrifice this for you because it's the right thing to do. Oh, good little Christian girl. Oh. It was from that, or it was from me literally feeling like it was karmic. As in, I wouldn't be thinking about the pure act of doing something for someone, but would be thinking about this is coming back to me in some way. So I don't really think it was that healthy. Honestly, <laughs> happy 420 by the way, that is the day I'm filming this. So I had to wear my stoner babe shirt. This is from Vicky's Closet, a sex worker owned shop. When I followed my truth, which is that Christianity was not the life for me, I really started to take responsibility for my own life. That's not to say that religion is always negative because it's not, but it wasn't where I should have been at that time. When I stepped out of that, I was really able to dig deep in terms of my desires and take them as a cue because that is what they are. Now you may yearn for something that's not necessarily meant for you, but the fact that you're yearning for it in the first place is a signal. Think of it this way, if your hand is burning, there's a reason for it. It could be nerve pain, it could be that your hand is on something hot, it could be something as simple as a nervous system signal. So I look at emotions as the same sort of way. I am a super emotional person though, I will say. And I used to feel a lot of shame around that. Like some people would make me feel bad for that. Now I'm in a place with people who really support me and a lot of the people who are closest to me are not very emotional, which actually kind of works out, like it balances out. But I do still have to remind myself that my emotions are not invalid. However, sometimes they do need a little bit more probing in terms of what the cause is. So for example, one of the things that I really yearned for was a boyfriend. I would totally have crushes on people, but I wouldn't even tell my closest friends because I didn't want to feel vulnerable in that way. And it was years before I would even admit that I wanted to have a boyfriend. Even when I was younger, I just had a feeling that I would not be in a serious relationship until my like mid to late 20s, which is exactly what happened. And looking back, I'm obviously so grateful for the way that everything turned out because that's the story that was meant for me. And I truly believe that. I'm not gonna have regrets about the way in which I lived my life, but I definitely could have been a lot more present with the things I was experiencing instead of constantly desiring to be somewhere else in someone else's life or in a different situation. Now that is completely human to be yearning for something greater or more or different. Like it's so fucking normal. So I'm not saying that that's bad and that you need to eliminate that because I don't even think that's possible. But it is important that we take ownership of the fact that we are in the driver's seat. You are in the driver's seat of your own life. It all comes down to a belief system. If you believe that you are lacking something, that is what you're gonna feel. Literally just look at people in cults, okay? Like they are able to convince themselves of things that somebody like us, maybe on the outside of that would be like, that's obviously fucking crazy and false. But on the inside, they are living in that truth. Now that's an unhealthy example of that practice, but my point is you do have the ability to change the way that you see things. Do you truly believe that you are in control of your life or do you low key think still that circumstances are out of your control? Because that subtle of a difference is gonna make a difference in your manifesting and in your subconscious thoughts. One of the huge things I've learned recently when it comes to mindfulness and manifesting is that those subconscious periods of time and thoughts make such a huge difference. Because yes, you can intentionally concentrate on a mantra or a thought or something during moments of meditation, but what about when you're fully asleep? What about when you're working? What about when you're just like walking from place to place? Are you really that disciplined that you are concentrating on the things you want to concentrate on? If so, then I'm happy you're here, but 
you've surpassed my abilities. My point is, obviously it's possible to do that, but most of us are not tapping into that, myself included. I mean, these videos, I feel like I'm also talking to myself, like I'm a part of the audience, I'm saying what I feel like needs to be heard. That being said, if there is a topic you do want me to talk about, let me know in the comments. Everything manifesting comes down to two main things, I would say, and that's belief and gratitude. Belief meaning that you believe that what you're yearning for is actually possible and does exist in this realm. Gratitude allows you to cultivate a sense of presence with whatever is happening in your life. A lot of people say that that is the most important thing in manifesting. That was a big point in the book, The Alchemy of Imagination. I'm gonna throw it up here because I don't remember the author's name, but that is an excellent book on manifesting because it really does go into why gratitude is so good for us. It's also just like healthy. This is genuinely not even woo woo stuff. Like this is very straightforward. If you create those neural pathways in your brain, you're going to jump to positive thoughts versus things that are gonna hold you back in life. I also recommend the four agreements. I'm gonna reread that, but there's a reason it's so popular. So let me know if you're gonna read it as well with me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you to Again, recognize your own power. If you yearn for something, there's a reason. Maybe it's a sign you need to go for it, or maybe it's a sign that you have some unresolved feelings or issues. I think a better word would be signals. You know, what is your body telling you? What is your, what are your subconscious thoughts telling you? You completely have the ability to change your experience moment to moment. That will result in big changes in your life, but ultimately it comes down to how you are experiencing your present. That's all that matters because nothing is guaranteed except this moment. I have lots of exciting things coming on this channel, so please go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and use my code ANGELMISTY on Angel Candy Shop for 10% off. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video.